Today we're, we are going to be talking about numbness in gaming. Any kind of numbness that you experience, whether it be in your arms, your hands, your shoulders, your butt, your back, your... Yes. I didn't say That's anything. what everyone came here to see. Exactly. Don't lie. We're here for Ace Ventura. Yes. So uh, let us know where you guys might have uh, felt any numbness ever if you want to ask us any questions about numbness. Because if not, we're going to be just describing some common entrapment sites that uh, where nerves can get irritated. So, oh yeah. Hello, Savas. How are you? This is the called episode the pill. is sponsored by the Kabuki Strength. Kabuki Strength pill. Pain pill. It's not really sponsored, but we'll if they would like to sponsor us, I will take more pain pills. Ooh, hey! Thanks for tuning in at one a.m. in the morning. Hopefully, this is the educational section uh, for you. Um, so let's just start by asking the question for our four viewers. You know, how is everyone doing? And have you ever experienced numbness before as a gamer? So we, maybe we'll demonstrate, you know, at the, at the end of this. Uh, but we definitely always have two components for our stream. This is something we're going to be doing every single week. We have a mobility component. And then we have a stability component. That's right. Stability. Both and, are important for different reasons. Yeah. And and why don't you describe what's, what's mobility and what's stability? So mobility is your body's ability to actually move. So it's not necessarily how strong you are or how much endurance you have, but it's really your body's ability to move through a range of motion. So a range of motion is essentially whatever the big joint that you're looking at is capable of doing. So all of the motions that are available at any given joint, and then you combine those joints together and then you get bigger, more compound movements that arise from that. So it's not just one range of motion, of one joint now you're looking at compound movements of the entire body and when you have enough range of motion at those individual joints you develop what we call good mobility which allows you to participate in all kinds of different activities without difficulty or pain. and then stability on the other hand is going to be your body's ability to actually uh, maintain um, good form while you're going through that range of motion lifting heavy objects or even light objects the, the concept that your muscles are actually keeping the integrity of those joints in place while they're going through their ranges of motion. So a lot of problems we see in physical therapy break down um, or boil down to a lack of either mobility or stability and usually both. Yep. Um, so the way that we address mobility deficits is by doing mobility work using a whole bunch of different tools that we have as physical therapists, our hands, um, or even things you can do on your own, like stretching. Yep. Burate says, I used to get numbness in my mouse hand when gaming a lot. The same hand used to feel blah. Used to feel sometimes too. But he hasn't had that problem since stopping competitive FPS gaming. Well, that's one way to deal with your issue. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good segue because we're going to talk about some of the common entrapment sites. If you don't mind swapping over here. Yes, we're going to talk about the common entrapment sites of our upper body or that occur when we're sitting for extended periods of time uh, due to the different ways that we sit that can cause numbness. So we're going to start at the top or maybe top here at our neck and imagine I'm a gamer here and Elliot will demonstrate a few points that can create different types of numbness and will show you what patterns of numbness and where you will feel it. So let's start at the neck. What's one common enchantment site that you know you've seen in, in gaming, in FPS games? Let's do that. So before we talk about entrapment sites, let's talk about what's getting entrapped. So True. in order for you, your brain, this thing in here, to feel anything, to feel your hands, to feel your toes, to feel anything, it has to be connected with a nerve. Those nerves go from that place to your brain. And they get there in certain ways. It's not just a random pattern. They're kind of grouped together. So for instance, all of the nerves that go to your fingers, they go through your fingers, they come up this way, they come through here, they go through the armpit, through the shoulder, through the neck, into the spine, into your brain. So what happens is 
There are certain areas where they're more protected than others. In certain areas where they're more vulnerable, vulnerable to being entrapped or pinched than others. And some of those areas include the neck, the neck, the shoulder, the shoulder, the elbow, elbow, and even the, the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel. Ah! It's not <laughs> your problem. It's you almost don't have carpal. Never carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay. All the cameras. All the cameras. Point ha! all the cameras. All ha! the cameras. Not carpal One, tunnel. Two. Not carpal tunnel. Not, not carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel. Not carpal tunnel. Anyhow, your carpal okay. tunnel is a place that nerves can get entrapped. But unless you've been playing Fortnite for 50 years, it's probably not your issue. 50 years. It hasn't even been out that long. Okay, so starting at the neck, we definitely can get some entrapment here. Actually, so describing in this area, what there's three really common entrapment sites that can lead to the specific type of numbness that a lot of us feel more along the pinky side of the wrist and hand. And while it's not just limited to the pinky side and numbness, a majority of the time, that part of this branch or this big bundle of nerves gets irritated or gets pinched. And that's why you feel it in certain patterns, right? Because we have this big branch of nerves that Elliot was describing that innervates all these different muscles of our hand. Some innervate the palm side of our wrist, some innervate the dorsal side or the back side of our wrist and hand, and then some innervate the pinky side. And as I mentioned, the pinky side is one of the more common parts of that bundle of nerves that gets irritated. So what's one common site? In so, this area. One of the most common things that can happen is if your muscles that do this motion here are not so strong, uh, what happens is uh, this happens. Your head goes forward, forward like that. And when that happens, all of the muscles on the side of your neck here, they get nice and tight. So all those mus those nerves that come out your spine, go down into your arm, they get pinched. Now nerves, when they get pinched, they send symptoms downstream. So even though the problem is here, you're feeling it here. So it feels like, what are some common nerve symptoms? So it feels like when you your leg falls asleep, you get that tingling sensation. You get that, whoa, there's all these ants crawling all over me. That numbness feeling. We call it paresthesia, you know, for, for you uh, aficionados. And it can even be pain too. Yes. Nerve pain, if it goes on for long enough, can cause that kind of decrease in sensation and it can cause decrease in actual motor function. Your muscles will stop working if you have a nerve entrapment for long enough, but typically that's not the issue we see, although it can be. Yep. Um, so what, what he, Elliot was describing was there's nerve entrapment that can occur here at some of your nerve roots where it just exits the spine. And that one, just to be clear, is not the one that causes the pinky side. It's more actually down here in the shoulder, right? And that is one of the three mo most common points is in the scalenes here. There's a little, there's these two muscles here, and maybe I'll just draw it here. Maybe hopefully you, you guys sit can like see. fingers like this. Yes, yes. There's three branches, and one goes here, one goes down here, and one goes over here. And between these fingers, you have nerves sticking out. And when yes. those muscles tighten down, they pinch on those nerves. And that causes problems here. Yep. So that's one. Scalene one entrapment. Number two, we have our first rib. This one's somewhat more hard to visualize, but we're gonna add some things in post-processing so you guys know exactly what we're talking about. But we have the first rib, but we also have our collarbone right here, which we call our clavicle. And right here, if you guys can see, if I get a little close, right where I'm pointing, there's my first rib, and right below it is the clavicle or collarbone. And if the first rib, based on how we're sitting a lot of the times like this, gets pulled by these muscles, the scalenes, it can cause it to elevate. And then again, it can cause nerves between the collarbone and that first rib to become irritated. Be pinched. Pinchy, pinched, pinchy. pinched, 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 and causing Blue over here says pinky. it sounds like the sciatica that my friend had where the problem was actually around the back, but the pain shot down his leg. Sciatica is another great example of a nerve yes. entrapment. Yes, it that is. happens for the same reason in the lower back. So that's ah! here, and it runs down ah! your leg. 
exactly. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so it feels just like that. Feels exactly like that. A big slap in the butt. And um, wow. Woo. I feel like a brand new person. So it's not fun. Yeah, it's not fun. And so we, we talked about two enchantment sites and we also talked about sciatica that it starts at your back, you get slapped in the booty because you get this sharp pain that shoots down your leg. And so that's not that common in gamers, but it, it has been seen. We've been we've seen it before and a lot of people oh, are you sick. You can definitely get sciatica from sitting for in the sure, chair. For sure, for sure. We we've seen it. But it's not something that's more common than what we see with the upper extremity because we're using it so often when we're gaming. So uh, just to finish off this description, we have one more common enchantment side of the neck and then we're gonna leave some room for questions and help you understand what you can do to address those issues, address those sites where the nerve can get pinched. What's the last area that gets entrapped around so, here? This area is gonna be the front of your chest here. And this happens because of this. This position right here, yeah. how many of y'all look like this when you game? Yeah. See what happens to this muscle right here? <laughs> this muscle right here that I'm digging into that I cupped. Hold on, let's let's see, let's see. Oh my God. Marks. Guys, look what, look what Elliot did last time. Oh man, it's some nice bruising, it's over there. Bruising. But anyhow, this pec muscle right here, when you round your shoulders forward, it gets nice and tight. Point. And it's going to pinch on those, those nerves that run down into the arm, also causing this problem. So when we talk about all of these postural issues, what is the major thing that people can do to kind of counterbalance this? So in order to address the potential sites where the nerve does get entrapped or pinched, we have to work on mobility, right? What did Elliot say? He said that if we're sitting in certain at certain points like this, then muscles can get tight, muscles can get stiff. But on the flip side, muscles can also get inhibited and weakened, right? So we want to do those stability exercises on top of that. We always have to do both, mobility and stability. It sounded like I was saying the exact same word, but I was not because they rhyme. Right, so let's focus first on the mobility component. When we're talking about muscle entrapments here, and that sounds like what our friend has in the comments on Twitch, um, Shadi Val. Shadi Val. Um, it sounds like if it's posture related, you said you had carpal tunnel, but you said that your physical therapist said it was coming from your shoulder. So that's much more the likely scenario that we're talking about here. And it has a lot to do with the posture, as we just explained. When your shoulders get rounded forward, your neck goes forward, all of these muscles here get nice and tight. So in order to mobilize this area, there's a couple things we can do. We're gonna start with some just gentle stretching. So if you wanna start with a stretch that's just designed to stretch out these scalenes here, I can show you how that looks. You're gonna cross your arms across your collarbones like this. Please don't fall and die on camera. That would be on live stream fails immediately. All right, so we're gonna be here like this, like you're choking yourself, but not in a weird way. And go ahead and look up and away from the side that you're trying to stretch. So if you have numbness and tingling in your right arm, you're gonna to wanna to look up and away from that right arm. Yep. So you look up, rotate away from the right side, and then you can even bend your left ear to your left shoulder so you feel it a lot more on this front side because the scalenes are right here. We're trying to stretch this area. That's one stretch. And Shadival, there are so many things that could be contributing to your issues. It's not our place right now to be able to diagnose that because we, have, we would have so many questions. When you say carpal tunnel, is it pain in your wrist? Because a lot of the times that can be misdiagnosed. It can be actually tendon related pain. Is the neck pain associated with your actual wrist pain? We don't know, but it is something that working with that physio, they need to understand gaming a little more so they can properly load and target the right muscles. Hopefully they're addressing it correct uh, or correctly, but maybe this will help, uh, help you better understand how certain postures and how maybe how you're sitting is contributing to some irritation of nerves and, and some of your symptoms. So we targeted the scalenes. So, th so we that's a good stretch to start you a off. stretch for that. What's another stretch that we can do? Another great stretch that you're gonna wanna do is to open that chest up. So what you see what Matt's doing here where he's putting his hands behind his back like this. Oh, we're doing, we're doing yep. camera too? What's that? Oh, camera no, this one right here. Okay. And then pulling back like this as much as you can. You should feel a stretch on the front side here. So go ahead and look at camera one. 
Ah, right? And you can even inhale as you lift your arms up and exhale on the way down. Even hold it at the end of the range of motion so you feel that stretch along the front side here. This is just a one potential way to stretch. You can even then hold the doorway in, rotate, hold the doorway up here because it targets different fibers of the pec. So imagine that there's a doorway here, rotating, rotating across so that you can feel that stretch along the pec side. So we have a scalene stretch, we have a pec stretch. There's also a first rib mobilization that maybe we can demonstrate with a belt. Yeah, you think you've got your belt over there. Yo, what's up Clarks, how's it going, man? Thanks for stopping by. Good afternoon to you as well. All right, let's do camera. Here, I'm grab the, uh... Okay. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be demonstrating how to do a first rib mobilization with a belt. This is a mobilization belt or a gate belt uh, for you physical therapists. I'm gonna show it on camera one and camera two. So camera one, you're sitting on the belt. It's going all the way up. You can use a towel, and I'll use a towel. Let me grab a towel right here. Towel to soften the contact of the belt right over where your shoulder is. So you're sitting on one end of the belt. You're lifting your arm up. You're putting this here. And you guys can try this right now if you want to. Go ahead and grab a belt or even a long towel. You sit on one end. You pull it around here, and you're going to actually get as close to the base of your neck as possible. You want to get right over the belly of the upper trap. And right here, just like this. And you're going to be pulling down and in, down and in here like this, in this diagonal, as you can see. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to take up as much of the tissue slack as possible by pulling down and in. And so you should feel, if I keep my head up like this and slight tilt of my right ear to my right shoulder, it's going to bring that first rib up towards this belt. And so you're gonna take the tissue slack up by pulling down and to the right, tilting my head over, and then we're oscillating. And what I mean by that is I'm pulling the belt, moving slowly, if you guys can see, through ends of the range of motion. If zero is all the way is relaxed and 100 is I'm pulling as much as possible, we wanna move between 80 to 90. Or I'm mobilizing that, pushing that first rib back down, which essentially what we're probably doing is physiologically, we're allowing the scalenes to relax a little more so that first rib isn't as elevated. So it's a deep stretch. Three, what we typically recommend is three times, 30 oscillations, you relax a little bit. And even if I do this right now, my left side feels a lot more open than my right. Um, so we have three stretches. We have your scalenes, this one. Ah, we have your pec stretch. Ah, you can use a doorway. Ah, you can use a lot of things. And you can also do the first rib stretch. And so we covered mobility. Mobility for what you can do to address these common pinching sites. And now that we've addressed mobility, what's next? Next up is stability. You guessed it, chat. Mm -hmm, Great job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when we say stability, what do we mean? We mean strengthening and building up the endurance. So the, someone brought up chiropractic earlier. And the issue with chiropractic, not to say that it's not good or they're not good at what they do, but it's all based on mobility, right? So if you only do mobility, you're going to see improvements, but you haven't solved the problem. You've just set yourself up for success. So when you're doing chiropractic mobilizations, all of the neck cracking, adjusting, stretching, all of that stuff, you are increasing the length of those muscles. The reason that they got tight in the first place was because of postural stuff, and you have low endurance or essentially just weak. You're weak, son. So You're weak. You're weak. That's why muscles get tight. Muscles get tight because you're weak. <laughs> exactly. So if all of the muscles on the chest here are tight, they're rounding the shoulders, pulling you in like this, which muscles do you think are weak? These muscles or these muscles? One's in the chat for this, two's in the chat for these. I'll give you guys some, some, some time. time here. Two's on the back, two's in the one's back, one's on the front. One's in the front. 
two is in the back. Two's gonna dance. One's in the front. I need to see two's some engagement. In the back, one's in the front. Two's, two's in the back, back. One's in the front. Two's in the back. One's in the front. Two's in the back. One's in the front. Two's in the back. One's in the front. And in the meantime, we're gonna answer this question. Boo rat, boo rat, ratty says, "Is the stretch supposed to be on your shoulder? Which one? Hopefully." Um, the scaling stretch is here in the neck. The pec stretch is here in the front of your chest, sometimes coming down into your bicep. And then we also have the first rib stretch, feeling it right here, because it's the direct contact of the towel into that first rib area. So those are the areas that you'll feel it. All right, and the results are in. Two's, two's in the two's chat. Two's in the chat. Two's, two's in the chat. Two's in the chat. Two's in the chat. <laughs> Um, yes, the two. muscles are in fact weak. So we need to strengthen them up. So how are we gonna do that? There's a couple of different ways. Some if you have some equipment and others if you don't. We're gonna show you two ways to strengthen your back muscles. One if you have bands, two if you don't. So Ooh, first one. That's a rap song. If you got bands or If you not. got bands. If you got bands, you, got you bands. can get strong. Okay, anyways. All right. So what, so what do I do? I don't know if y'all can see these bands here. Guys, I have weak arms. Actually, you, you, you can demonstrate. Oh, I have hooked these bands up to a pole out of camera. I don't know if it's worth turning this around so you can see what yeah. I'm done here. Uh, okay, hold on. But I've hooked one. this band up to this pole. Oh, and... Oh, there it is, yeah. Boom. Okay, well... we'll Hopefully it doesn't mess up all my autofocus. Yeah. Here we go. So, first exercise we can do to strengthen those back muscles this is a compound motion that you all should be doing. Everybody should be doing this motion. I don't care who you are. Everyone should be doing a row. He doesn't care who you are or where you're from. Or what you do. Or why or you're what here. Kind of cereal you like. He doesn't care. You I should care. always you be should doing be, this. Always be rowing. Everyone always should be, be rowing. rowing. If you're a gamer, you should be doing this motion. In the gym, with cable column, with dumbbells, you should be doing this motion all the time, every day. Elliot doesn't care where you're from, why you're, why you're 12, why you like Pokemon. You should be rowing, when rowing you're running, all you day. You want to make sure you're in good posture. So you want that chin tucked back. You want your shoulders tucked back. You want to be pulling back like this, squeezing your elbows in tight. Oh, sorry. We're going to go back to camera number one. So we're going to demonstrate. He, number one, he sets himself up for success with proper thoracic position, mid-back position. Number two, you can see his shoulder blade position or shoulder position is pretty great. It's set back. It's not overly retracted because we don't need, always want to push into that overly retracted position. That's not how we function as humans. We function allowing our shoulder blades to move into this full range, as you can see here. So he starts set back. And then he's just pulling, driving that motion with his elbow so that he can strengthen these muscles behind, right? And we're working here, the middle trap, the lower trap, the rhomboids. You can maybe say very minor in your post delt. <laughs> what? Minor post delt use. Yeah. Okay, and so this is one exercise you can do. What's another exercise? All right, so very much like the rows, this is gonna be the reverse fly. So this is gonna work all those muscles, but with a longer lever arm. So I'm gonna step forward just a tad here, and we're gonna come back just like this. Bam, just like you wanna give the big world a hug. Bam! You have to say bam every time or it doesn't work. Bam! Oh, you're my best friend, Matt. Bam! 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 Oh, bam! Bam! Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> yes, the reverse fly. The reverse fly. So let's go over the, the key cues, the key performance, um, key performance cues for this exercise. Again, we always start with chest position. Always set that up too. His shoulders are set. You're not, his shoulders aren't rounding forward with every repetition. Although, hey, that can be a specific exercise as well but for this purpose we want to be able to maintain our shoulders and strengthen the right muscles which again here are mid trap and here we're also working on the post delt a little bit of the lower traps as well and then depending on how much he's retracting his shoulder blades we can be using the rhomboids or not over using the rhomboids so we that's have the reverse fly we have the reverse fly and we have the rows what else so let's show them two ways we can do that motion mm -hmm. 
without equipment. Mm. Or at least the reverse fly without equipment. True. So, you have the edge of your bed or a table like this. There's two ways. Actually, we'll uh, go here. I'm, I'm lying down. I'm the, I'm the guy demonstrating. All right. Start with it hard to see? the reverse fly here. I was going to have, yeah, just like this. Oh, it's on camera one right oh, now. Okay. Maybe, maybe do two then. Maybe just swap it to two. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're going to angle this down just a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on here. So, yes, sir. Corner of the bed. This is a way to find, if you guys don't have bands, you can lie on the edge of your bed. You can have your head down, supported with a towel or with your own hand here. And the focus here is you're going to be lifting your arm up. And the key actually for this exercise is that we don't overuse our upper trap. We don't become trap kings. Okay. A trap lot of the kings. times these guys become overutilized and they become tight. And so if I were to place my actual hand here, maybe it's kind of difficult, but if you're, if Elliot was to place his hand here to make sure that I'm not using it, I'm lifting up, I'm squeezing my middle and lower trap and he would just be putting pressure on my upper trap to ensure that I'm not using it, that it's staying nice and soft, nice and supple so that it's so supple. It's so supple right now. Like baby's bottom. <laughs> like baby's bottom. <laughs> supple. Um, yeah, so this is the T or this is the reverse fly. Unilateral reverse fly. If you do enough, it can really work on the muscles that are crucial here. If you feel like your shoulders are elevating, then you're really needing momentum, then maybe you want to cut down the repetitions just to the point where you can do clean clean form repetitions only. So start with about eight to 10 and work up from there. So that's one option. Another option is just using the corner of your table or bed and just again, stepping out, supporting yourself in this quarter squat position and then lifting your arm up in this T or reverse fly. So that's, uh, that's how you can do it without equipment. Um, and we wanted to keep this stream pretty short, so we, we demonstrated three exercises, three stability exercises. We demonstrated the row, we demonstrated the reverse fly with the TheraBand, and we also demonstrated the reverse fly on the table or in the quarter squat position, what I always call the bent over T. So those are exercises to maintain this setback posture. And remember, you can't forget about mobility. You want to make sure that your shoulders move well by doing the three stretches, right? You have your pec stretch behind the back, lift up. You can do a doorway stretch like this and step through. The first rib mobilization, using the belt, pulling down and in. You can also do the scaling stretch. Ah, 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 nice. And we also discussed all the possible entrapment sites. We suck mainly to the neck and the shoulder but we will get into some of these sites at the elbow, obviously the wrist and hand, um, and even some in the arm that can create more rare, but still some patterns that we've these seen These are before. by far the number one reason that gamers have numbness and tingling. Mm -hmm. It's from the shoulders, just due to postural exactly, issues. Exactly, exactly. And you know, again, for anyone that wants to get dig in a little more into the science, it is called thoracic outlet syndrome. Uh, I, I'm going to be posting a case study relatively soon with how I helped a professional professional Call of Duty player address it in season. Um, I posted a little preview of that on, on Twitter today. Um, so you know, we didn't talk about how to actually stretch your nerves. Um, so you're not stretching the nerves so much as you are flossing them. So I don't know if you guys ever did this when you were a kid. Oh, Batman goggles. Do it, Matt. Do it now. Hey, I'm Batman. Hey, hey. Do your nerve glides. Do your nerve glides. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, that is how you mobilize one of the nerves that goes into that pinky there, that most common sight of gamer's nerve pain. So you're going to essentially make the okay sign like this, and you're going to try to go for your face. You're not going to fully go all the way up to your head. But essentially, you're just doing this. So while you're doing it, it's in its most stretched position when it's closest to your head. 
So that's when you want your head to go towards it. So you're actually putting the part of the nerve that attaches to your brain on slack. Yep. And then you go all the way through that way, and then you look away. And then you come back like this. Yeah, let me scoot over just a bit. From here, and out. In and, and out. out. So this should never be sliding. this should never be painful or make your symptoms worse. You might feel a little bit of stretching, a little bit of tension there. You might feel a little bit of symptoms, but you don't want it to make it worse. Exactly. So doing 30 of those a day can definitely be a helpful way to get that nerve moving through those entrapment sites and really just help you uh, stay uh, numbness free. Yeah. Or numbness free. Yeah, numbness yeah, free. Yeah, numbness free. Stay think, numbness stay free. Stay numbness free. I would say uh, a good time to do that is after you've been sitting for a while, right? So that because we develop tightness after long periods of time sitting, hey, you can do the stretches we showed, including the, that nerve glide or the nerve mobility exercise. Um, but that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will be doing this every single week. If you guys have some topics that you guys want us to talk about, throw it in the chat right now. Um, you know, clip something that you felt like was helpful, post it on Twitter, add us at Twitter with whatever you learned from this actual session. Um, and we'll be seeing you guys pretty soon. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you need individualized coaching for your injuries, sleep, exercise, or nutrition, you can check out our Patreon. And of course, you can catch us live on YouTube or Twitch. Play more, hurt less.